just going to do a real quick walkthrough here. Um, I posted a video previously about a new motor for my air compressor, and it did show up today. So um, the next part of this uh, video, I will actually be um, installing this new motor. So I just basically opened it up, but I haven't really looked at to see what it looks like yet. It is new stock, or newer stock, I should say, because it, it's uh, Balder Reliance. I'm not sure if any of you guys are aware of it, but Balder... Um, had acquired Reliance, and what they did was they went through all the catalog numbers that Balder and Reliance had to offer, and uh, they basically took what they wanted and discontinued the rest. And um, I believe they kept all the Balder single phase or Balder single phase motors and discontinued all the Reliance. Reliance didn't have a whole lot to offer, anyways, in single phase. I think they only went up to two horsepower, and I think a lot of it was is. Uh, I believe Reliance might have been struggling with design on single phase because it is a little bit different character. Um, I know personally from experience uh, growing up on a dairy farm, uh, we had a old seven and a half horse repulsion induction wagon motor on a 20 foot silage and loader and um, it finally burnt out and uh, replaced it with uh, basically whatever we get for an emergency use and we got in a 10 horse Reliance at that time and this was probably back in the early 80s. And anytime you'd flip that thing on, uh, the lights in the barn would just basically dim to the point where they're like half voltage and it would take forever to get up to speed. Um, they were very, very hungry on the startup amps. Operating amps are pretty good, but uh, needless to say that motor was only up there for about a week until we got a new balder and put the balder up there and um, noticed a significant difference in startup current. So anyways, I think it's been known that Bel or Reliance kind of struggled with single phase a little bit, so that's why they had only had a very small handful. So anyways, my battery on my phone here is dying, so I'll get into this here. And then I see that this is actually not part of Balder's packing. So it may be that this supplier actually does uh, additional packing, which is nice. Here we have it. That is nicely wrapped. This was definitely designed for a long ride. Okay, well I'm going to set the uh, camera down here. I'm going to take it out of the box. Okay, just to recap, I'm not sure as far as how much my other uh, camera on my cell phone I caught, it's dying. So, just to grab the handy cam here, or the Samsung version of it anyways. Anyways, here's the motor. Uh, it is a um, L1410T. Um, this one is capable of pulling 23 full load amps plus a 1.15 service factor, so it's about 26 and a half amps. Which should be able to get this uh, Quincy back up to its original RPM of 828 RPMs. This is the open drip proof model. Um, if I would have gotten the L141030, it would have been open in the back. But there had been a fan in the front with a fan cover that had no holes in it. And the idea was that actually pull air through the windings and stator and actually blow air uh, over the motor to keep it cool. So that one had a little bit lower amp rating, but suppose it was supposed to be more efficient, but I knew that this one would do it. So uh, I grew up on a dairy farm with Belder Motors, so I know that this one is perfectly capable of handling the job. So anyways, I'm gonna hoist this uh, muscle this bad boy over by the compressor and um, we'll get started here. I just dropped a screw I didn't want to drop. I'm not junking this motor, it's going to go back for a spare for either this compressor or it'll also work on my dust collector because it is a totally enclosed fan cooled and really for an area like a dust collector it would be best to use something that's totally enclosed fan cooled. As we all know that sparks and a fine combustible dust is a bad deal. <clears throat> Of course, I could be at home right now watching the results of the election, but I'd just much rather wait 24 to 48 hours or however long it takes for everyone to get their votes in because we all know that some of that stuff we've been having issues with here in the U.S., so I'd much rather just wait and see it when it's all said and done to see who our new president is. Now, if I could only see what I'm doing here. I had to put the starter right here. Now I can't get in here decently, but that's all right. I shouldn't have to in this new one. Now, just as an added precaution, I'm gonna put the wire nuts back in here just in case something funky happens. 
Oh, I'm going to remove this here as well. Actually, that would be good there. So I'm going to take a 916 wrench and loosen up the motor. Last bolt here. Now this compressor, um, Quincy had a little different um, mounting system. Uh, as the newer, the newer compressors today, and I don't care which brand it is, uh, most of them now they just basically they cut slots in the plate on top and you move your motor across that. What Quincy did was actually got a couple of motor mounting plates that the motor bolts to, and then you mount the mounting uh, bracket to the plate on the compressor, which basically has four holes and they're not slotted. All your movement is on these two feet here that I'm going to show you shortly. doesn't require a special motor mount by any means, but it just it's something a little bit different rather than, uh, like I said, punching a, a hole. Okay, this should be free. And let's see here. Trying to avoid. There we go. Well, if you want to get a good feel for the motor size, you'll see it here very shortly. These are the two feet I was talking about. <clears throat> so yeah, this is your mounting. I gotta make sure now that I put both of these on the new motor because it's the same mounting pattern. Make sure I put them on the same way. And actually what they did here was this, they're still using a, uh, a square uh, nut yet. And it actually sits in this track. So the whole idea is, is that um, this will kind of sit in here and not turn around on you. So kind of a neat deal, I guess. I'm sure somebody out there can tell me I'm doing this ass backwards, but that's all right. I got all night. Well, not really, but I'll get it done. And this isn't something I do every day. Okay. So if you want to get a size comparison, this sucker weighs about 100 pounds. And here's the new one. Now how well you can see that. Oh yeah. So the pulley on this one is about seven inches and this here is the original Quincy pulley. It's uh, 7.75 actually. And well, yeah, that'll fit nicely. So I'm not going to put that on. I'll set it on there, but I'll get the, the keyway and everything in. But I'm not going to set it until uh, I have it up there and everything aligned. So, but this will bring the compressor back to its original RPM of uh, 828 RPMs or 825, however you want to calculate it. There's, there's some slight variations there. But, um,. Got some rust issue here, but nothing you can't fix. So, okay, so I can actually set it on right now, but actually the next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to wash my hands first or wipe them off a little bit. Put the new feet on the new motor, crack open this electrical box, I'm not fumbling with it up there, and then uh, we'll get this one up there and should be up and running here in a matter of minutes, so. I decided not to wash my hands. I just decided to let's get this thing together here. Now there's no right or left to these, but we want to make sure that we get them back on the same way I took them off. And I have a couple extra bolts here that don't really mean anything. Mm. 
I already got a little bit of a problem. These bolts from Quincy are a little bit longer. Hopefully I've got something shorter. If not, I'll just double up the washers, I guess. Well, we'll see if these shorter ones work. Oh yeah, that'll work. Now these nuts here have a rounded edge and I took them off so that the rounded edge is on, on the inside so that's the way I'm going to put it in and that's the way it was when I took the original three-phase motor off so oh yeah we're in, in through the nut so now the one thing I gotta be careful of because these feet are on the inside, they're underneath the plate. So I gotta make sure that before I put this in position, I get a bolt in each spot, and then I can raise it up with a little bit of help. And Put the other side in. It's the only thing I never liked about this, but how often do you change a motor on a compressor? I don't do it very often. I try not to do it very often. I'm just going to set that there for the time being. Because this will vary depending on the belt tension. Now I'm going to a small or a larger pulley, so my motor is going to be closer to the pump now. So this location here is going to change. If I was in the center before, I'm going to be off center and closer to this side. By the way, this uh, dirty hand business, this is the way I got the compressor. This compressor was literally just covered in uh, oil. Uh, I investigated the rear seal and that's pretty much where all the oil was coming from. So. That was a pretty simple fix. Okay, so the one thing that I want to address before I put the motor back in the compressor, I got a little rust ridge right in the inside here. So I'm going to take some emery cloth or a piece of sandpaper, being I have a cabinet shop, and just lightly clean this up because that's what's keeping this pulley from going in past the end of the shaft. I can get it started, but I don't want to force it. Okay, so what I have here is just a piece of 150 paper. I'm just going to run around this inside here and clean that up. I actually pressure washed this pulley and then I repainted it. Kind of stupid, but I figured what the heck. New motor. Let me revive the pulley a little bit. And I actually found a, a Krylon paint that was a, a metallic color, kind of like I like the compressor. It's off a little bit, but close enough for me. Now, if I had a motor with a dinged up shaft, I'd actually hook this motor up to power and just take a piece of sandpaper going. If the rotation was like this, it'd go like this, so that we'd want to pull the sandpaper from under. You don't want to go all like this because it could come back and you could bang up your knuckles. And that's obviously something you do at your own risk. But like I said, if the shaft was damaged, I'd actually just run the motor and just slightly sand the shaft, just so slightly. Now, if this was a fine uh, import car, you wouldn't catch me doing this. But this little bit here, I'm not really, I'm not honing a cylinder or anything. Oh, I like to use a little WD-40 and clean up the shaft a little bit. Now, spray a little bit inside the bore. A lot of people like to use uh, wheel bearing grease and that's not a bad idea. I know I did, we did on the farm a lot, just for the simple reason, exposed to a lot of the outdoor elements, but. Okay, this next step, 
I see a lot of people not using the key. Um, I don't think people really understand what this key is for, but this key is really designed to lock the pulley to the shaft. As you can see, there's a slot in the shaft and there's a slot in the pulley. What will happen is without that, you run the risk of under load of breaking the set screws loose off of the shaft and spinning the shaft inside the pulley. So that sets that, that the keyway is there for a reason. Okay, that fits nicely. Okay, so the next step is I'm going to muscle this. Actually, uh, where is my screwdriver? I'll grab a different one. I'm going to open this up here. Open this up here. I'm going to look at the conduit box here quick. See what kind of connections we have here. And unfortunately, I'm going to end up taking the belt guard off yet because uh, I won't have a decent way of lining the pulley up with the flywheel and the compressor, so I will have to do that. But I won't YouTube that because you're going to be seeing me nothing but cussing and swearing, so I try to make my videos family oriented or uh, let's just say YouTube user agreement oriented. Okay. Got three, four wires. And I'm pretty much going to tell you uh, standard rotation. Five and four together. Four and five. So this here is, um, I'm thinking this goes up to one of the start kit for one of the capacitors. Because this motor does not have a manual or a thermal overload, so these aren't for overload. And then we should have one and eight. Yep, one and eight. It was already tested at the factory. See, the wires are somewhat messed up. Okay, so next step, I'm going to remove that godforsaken belt guard. I'm going to set the motor up there. We're going to get everything lined up, tighten it down. We're going to wire it up. We're going to see if it works. All right.